Welcome back to Anita Podcast. We're going to get started. Today we have a special guest all the way from Houston, Texas. Before I introduce her, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe, like, and comment on this video. And who knows, maybe, maybe um, you know, you guys will learn a thing or two. There's a lot of cool topics that we talk about, but today is the ultimate debate. What is better, California or Texas? No, I'm kidding. I really, for a second, thought you were going to say Whataburger or in and out like, <laughs> Right, I was right. That, that's that. another debate. So, yeah. Juani, thank you for joining. I know you were a little nervous doing this. Yeah. If uh, you guys don't know who she is, um, it's a good friend of my wife's. And she's all the way from Houston, Texas. We actually just were over there not too long ago. But, you know, I really was excited to have her on because um, I've had a few guys this season. So, you know what? I'm I'm for, like, the women empowerment, CEOs, boss, mom, like, all that stuff, right? So I know you relate to Blanca a lot in that sense. So I'm glad to have you on board. And um, how's everything? I mean, it's it's good. I'm, I'm a little nervous to be here, you know? I, I said that from the beginning, but I'm excited. I, I also always empower, like women and women in business and i feel like blanca was a big deal as to why i'm where i am so i'm excited mm -hmm. to like be able to like talk about that a little yeah, bit yeah yeah for sure so um i'm gonna tag all your social media handles i know that you do have a business so we are gonna talk about all of that good stuff so let's just go back a little bit um into how you got started with all of this so i'm not really too familiar with what you do so mm -hmm. are you on youtube on instagram like how did you kind of start coming up like yeah, where yeah. does all where does it all start so I actually started in um, 20, 2014 because of Blanca. Mm -hmm. I fo was following Blanca when she was only at 40K. Okay. Yeah, so um, she promoted a lipstick. I was just telling her the other day, you promoted a li lipstick. I went and bought the lipstick, and I just loved her as an influencer at the time. You know, she was one of the biggest influencers because she was so relatable. So yeah. I sent her a message like, oh, I love the lipstick. I love how it looks on me. Um, and she replied back and she followed me back right away. And I was like, I was like, I'm about to log off. Here's my number. Text me. And she texts me like the same day. And it's like, we've had, an, we've had never met. And so like, she encouraged me. She was the one that would always tell me like, you need to quit your nine to five. Like you have so much potential. So that's when like YouTube and social media came in. So yeah. I started off as a makeup artist. Okay. Okay. So yeah. you were basically just kind of following these influencers. Mm -hmm. Obviously she was one of your favorites and yeah. Once you guys started talking about that, you kind of opened up to her that there's something you potentially wanted to do. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I, I liked, the, you know, the camera being on YouTube. I liked all that, but I just wasn't like confident enough mm -hmm. at the time. And I did work a nine to five. But, you know, sometimes you, you don't have time. Like, it's scary. Yeah. Yeah. You get up really early, go to work. By the time you're home from traffic, it's like time to go to bed. And then the next day is the same thing. You right, know, so, right, right. you know, she would always encourage me, like make time for it. Um you know, just try it out. It might work for you. And she shared all of her, t all of her tips, her tricks, how to message brands, how to respond to brands. And I think that just like gave me the little push I needed. For sure. Yeah. yeah it's like definitely important to, um, sorry, not, not to cut you off, yeah. but just like in a way it's a mentor. So I think yes. it's so important. You got to kind of give yourself that information. Like either you do it yourself, mess up, or if not, just be around good people that are willing to help you. Yeah. I feel like you have to be like, or have to have someone to guide you and things like this. Well, you know, she didn't have anybody guiding her, but she did so great. And she was like doing this before anybody else. So I feel like right now, if there's no one to guide you, then you really won't make it because there's so much stress behind it, you know? Right, right. Yeah. I mean, I think another important part is being um, an open book into like listening and then applying it in whatever way you're going to do it. Because it's not like you're going to do everything that she's going right. to recommend you to do. But if right. you just apply it and you mm -hmm. create your own thing out of that. Mm -hmm um good things happen so yeah. um that's how that that relationship started so that's cool to hear a little backstory so what, what job were you working so i um i always enjoyed like the hr scene okay, so okay. something completely different from what i'm doing now so you were taking um, like phone calls and stuff yeah right? and i was like hiring people interviewing like um jobs and all of that stuff okay, so i was okay. always in, in like that area that field yeah. okay cool and then um how long were you in that I, um, so I worked for a school for six years and then I worked, um, for recruitment and HR for two. And then I did HR for another two. Mm. So I was there for a long time. Like, oh, wow. yeah. this is what I thought I was going to be doing the, like the rest of my life, you <laughs> yeah. know? I mean, somehow it's funny, right? Cause yeah. you know, eventually we're going to get into like your business and yeah. now that you're on the back end of all that stuff, being yeah. a CEO, I'm sure you still deal with similar stuff, yeah. but now you do all the jobs, you know yes. what I mean? Not just yes. that, that, so that, that's funny. Um, <laughs> so moving it back a little bit, just kind of tell me, um, your background, like your family, how you grew up, where you grew up. Yeah. 
yeah. Um, I know you're Mexican, of course. Uh-huh. You were talking about doing the Spanglish thing. So yeah. what part of Mexico? So I'm from San Luis. Okay. We um, grew up in San Luis. We came here when, well, I came here when I was 10. Mm-hmm. So I really have been here all my life, but right. we go back every summer. Like we go back um, twice a year sometimes when we can. And my husband's actually from the same like place that I'm from. Oh, okay. We're literally like 15 minutes apart. I didn't mean him. I met him here. But he's from where I'm from. No so way. Like so you guys literally met and you happen to be from the same place. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. So we met here. And so now we go back because now he has family and I have family course, over there. Yeah. So that's nice. Um, we go back a lot. I love going to Mexico. I always like I'm such a like advocate for like the Mexican community and like sure. all we go through and like, you know, the American dream that we have. Yeah. So, yeah, we definitely are. Um, you know, we have a chip on our shoulder, but also, too, I think, you know, we're res- resilient in that sense where yeah. we continue to, you know, understand that our parents worked harder than us and mm-hmm. we have that extra step yeah. or that extra chip on our shoulder to keep going even more. So it's cool that you guys are doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, we haven't been back to Mexico, like to our own places in a long time, Blanca and I. But eventually, mm-hmm. I know that we're gravitating towards eventually going back yeah. um, and visiting. It's just nice to be able to see the roots, you know right. what I mean? Um, and then for the kids, too. I'd love, like, the kids to be, like, how we were because I do have a lot of, like, um, cousins that, you know, like, you guys don't go out often or don't go back there often. So, like, for us, it was, like, we had to, you know. Our summers, it was, like, okay, we got to have our shit together, like, during the year so we don't have to go to summer school and we'll be in Mexico all summer, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we made sure that we were in Mexico. So it was something that was a tradition growing up. Yeah, That's yeah, nice. definitely. Like, we didn't have summers here. Our summers were over there. We didn't have Christmas yeah. here. It was over there. And they're better, yeah. That's yes. typically the time of the year that, that people go, like, in the wintertime and stuff. Oh, man, so, it was, it's badass. So um, now moving forward, you know, you you were doing this job. So when did you meet your husband? So I met him in 2012. 2012. 2012. That's we about 10 years. Yeah, we we um we met in 2012. We started, or we were only dating for a year, and then we got engaged a year later, engaged for a year, and then we were married. In oh wow! Quick. So it all happened super fast. Like, and then the kids came, right? You have um, two now. Yeah, I have two. We waited five years, um, for That's to good. have our first baby. So you guys yeah. were like traveling and doing the whole thing. Yeah, we were partying. Like I came from very very strict parents. Like, I am talking about Donio had to come and see me outside of the house. Like, he could not come inside. Like, we were in the rancho. <laughs> so like, outside the gate? Or yeah, what? we were outside. <laughs> well, we didn't have gates, but we were. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. had to park outside, and I had to come outside and see him a couple hours. And then, okay, time to come in back inside, come in. you know? Wow, yeah. yeah. Very similar to Blanca, too. She was um, very sheltered, like, in that sense yes. of, like, being protected and stuff. But that's mm-hmm. just, I think, the Hispanic um, household, the typical yes. Hispanic household. You know, it's good, but then it's also bad because oh, you yeah. get traumatized with these certain things of mm. being scared. And I've always told Blanca that, like, you know, it's good that we instill these things, but also, yeah. too, we want to be not as strict with our right. kids, you know? Yeah, I feel like it's it's really important. And, yes, I feel like that's how I am. Like, I freak out about everything. Did and it give you an effect? Yeah, did it have yeah, a bad effect on you? Yeah, and even, like, now I'm, I'm about to be 30, and, like, mm-hmm. I still feel like I got to, like, let my mom know about everything right, I do. Right, like, right. I'm doing this because she had me so sheltered, so yeah, now, yeah. like, I want to stay in her bubble all the time and make sure that her bubble is approving what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah? yeah definitely. Yeah. yeah, that's how I feel with my mom too. Um, it was just more so like, let me know when you get there. Let me know when you yes. land. Now even I, I fly and I still do it, and I'm like, I didn't really have to do that. Yes. But then they 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 hold you accountable if you don't. Though, and right? I feel like yeah, like you're scared not to tell them. Like, for example, I've been wanting a tattoo. F- you know, I wanted to get a tattoo when I came down, and I right. was like, oh my god, like what is my mom gonna say? You know, like she's gonna be so disappointed, and I'm like girl, you're about to be 30. Why are you still like, you know, but yeah. we're all, we were always in that bubble that it's kind of hard to get out. You I know, think I just saw older. my, um, my tattoo guy, the one that tats us and he had an opening tomorrow. So it might be your lucky day. I don't know. You Mom, might. don't watch this. Yeah. We'll, we'll block her. Yeah. Does she watch your stuff? Uh, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, she does. She likes to read the comments. Right. 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 The yeah. comments are always the best. Right. Yeah. Um, so on, on your YouTube, just to explain your platform to people, mm-hmm. what, what will they find if they follow you? Um, of course, like you have your business, which yeah. we're going to get into right now, but yeah. just like, explain like your content. Yeah. So I actually, you guys are, might not find too much, too much content as, as far as like the last year. Recent. Yeah. Yeah. Because since I started the business, it kind of has been hard to balance, but you know, if you guys go there, I do a lot of like family blogs. So, 
Um, if you start towards the beginning, you you can see how me and Tonyo were before we had the kids and how we would party all the time. Most of our videos are out at bailes and oh, okay. having bills yeah, and yeah, yeah. drinking and the friends and all that. And then you see it transition into like Adriel being born Just and now like home, huh? family vacation, like to Mexico all together, like nice, or going nice. to the zoo or going downtown, you know? Yeah. So. Let's, let's speak a little bit about that. Um, being in Texas, you're talking about the Hattie Pills and the Baile. So I'm like a big, I was, I always loved it. Right. Mm -hmm. And and when we went to Texas, I told you, you know, people have this idea. They think I probably don't like that shit, but yeah. man, I mean, I'll post a picture here when I was a kid, I just wanted to be in boots and yeah. behind us. Now I'm still going to get to the day where we do that look oh, like in the to. modern. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So, um, and we'll jump into that now. Like yeah. that you do have a business. Mm -hmm. You guys do basically do like Western wear. Right. Yes. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I feel like it's, it's just something that has to happen just for old time's sakes, you yeah. know, but I've always liked it. I used to do a lot of bailes before mm. I used to love going, um, when I met Blanca, she had never been. So I feel like that's why she fell in love with me actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, I swear, I think that's why I told her I love her the first time. Yeah. It was at a baile. Oh. It was a, the Banda Royadora. I'll never forget. So romantic. Yeah. So romantic, huh? <laughs> and then, um, yeah, they were just cool. I loved it. And then we never did a Haripel. So I think we got to do it the right way yeah. and we got to go to Houston. Oh, you guys have to come to yeah. Houston. So we will do it the right way and we will go over there. So just explain that, um, your business, um, how that started, yeah. what got you into it and, yeah, and yeah, how, yeah. how's it going? Yeah. Well, like I said, I've, I've always been like such an advocate for like, like the Mexican culture. And even though like people think Texas and hats and boots, that's not where I was introduced to all that. To me, it was all in Mexico, you know, Yeah. when I would go down there, that's where I would get my hats and get my boots. So um, I actually had a clothing store back back in the day. Um, it didn't work out, you know, but one day I went out in the Houston area to f try to find like wholesalers and I came across a boot place. This is where I met my business partner. And then you fast forward, what, like four years after and he pandemic hits. So mm -hmm. he reaches out to me and he just says, hey, um, I don't know if you remember me, you used to buy like wholesale boots for me. I want to open up like another small business because my business is a physical. Everything is shut down. So right now there's nothing coming in. You know, mm -hmm. I just want to have like an online backup. Okay. You know, it can be a hobby for you and I. And if we get a, an extra hundred bucks on our pockets, then who's going to give you a hundred bucks? So I was like, oh, like I'm down. Um, what do you need? So he had me go down. He had me pick out some boots. Um, we took a couple pictures and our first launch, it was like we were like, flooded like, with support whoa yeah like oh wow nice. nothing like I, I don't think he expected it i didn't expect it you know he had been at his job for 15 years um i was at my dream job i always wanted to be an hr generalist i had just uh, got promoted the year before so we never thought that this was going to be like where we were today you yeah, know yeah, yeah. so um yeah the launch did great and four months after he was like okay i think i'm ready to leave my job and mind you like he had been there 15 years that's like, crazy huh he was like i'm gonna take this like I'm just going to take this leap of faith and then I'll have you stay at your job until I can secure that you're, we're going to be okay. Okay. So he actually worked um, for the brand until like the end of the year. And he was like, okay, January 1st, I want you to call your boss and tell her that's it's it. Wrap, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it all happened so quickly, you know, within wow. like less than a year. That's crazy. And he probably saw that launch and said, dang. Like, you know, he had a storefront, right? You said he had, he had a storefront. So yeah. just seeing something that could happen online and, and, and he had like never, yeah, he had never done 10 times line. like mm -hmm. what, what you can make in the yeah. storefront and physically having to be there, having a physical location isn't mm -hmm. easy, which I know you have now. Yeah. And how long has that store been open? That has only been open for about like eight months. Okay. Or so, and it's a uh, Rockham, right? Yeah. Rock yeah so we're going to tag Rockham. Uh, Blanca got some dope boots for Coachella there. And you know what the crazy thing is? I don't know if she told you, but when she was walking, uh -huh. everybody's looking at her boots, really looking yeah, at her boots, complimenting her boots. You just don't see them. That's they're awesome. different. That's yeah, awesome. they're different. They're higher too. So, yeah. I mean, I thought I made her outfit. So, mm -hmm. um, it's some good stuff. So we are going to tag the link for you guys to check them out. If you guys get some nice, boot, I mean, if you guys want some nice boots, definitely check them out. So we need to give them a discount code with your, um, podcast. for sure. Yeah. Let's do like, I don't know. We could do a little discount code, but in order to get it, I think you guys just have to look through the, the little, um, the information that I'm going to provide down yeah. below and then you guys will be able to get it, but okay. let them know how, um, how that is running a storefront. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I think that has been like the most stressful, but it's also like super like rewarding. Um, we do have like a storefront and then we have an office for an online business. Oh, well you went down. We have Okay. Okay. So that was basically your warehouse where you ship out of. Yes. And the other one is a storefront. Yes. Okay, I get so you. we actually started in like a, an office like this big. 
this is where we had our store because we still had customers even though we only had online we had customers that always wanted to pick up mm -hmm. so we had a store we had our warehouse and we we had our um like shipping department there okay we outgrew it so we got the bigger warehouse which is where the store is now so then we stayed as um the office and then the new store was the warehouse and the store well, okay, we okay. outgrew that too, and that's whenever we had to move to a different warehouse. Dang. And it's like now we have all these, all, all these, these little places. ones. Huh? But they're all within like two minutes apart, like yeah. literally like a light away from each I other. I lost you at warehouse. Yeah, like <laughs> we have three, so we have an office, a warehouse, and a store, and that has been great. I mean, like um, sometimes I'm in the office and people come over from like out of town, and they'll be like, "Oh, I want to meet Juani." So like that's very rewarding getting to meet people and like seeing how much support we um we give everybody and then see how much we help also our people in mexico because we do manufacture out of mexico for so. sure that's what i was going to ask you um it's cool that you have your your different departments though mm -hmm. because you i'm guessing you just bounce around day yeah. to day right mm -hmm. and then one is more like creative the other one is more yes. like i want to go work at the store today kind of yes. thing that's cool so you get to kind of differentiate things and mm -hmm. make it keep it fresh so um as far as manufacturing your boots that is what I wanted to get into because a lot of people don't understand like what goes into being a CEO and, yeah. and being creative and sourcing yeah. stuff. So just kind of explain, um, let's say you were going to make a boot, mm -hmm. like what, what would be the process? Um, so it's, it is a long process. We do, um, I'd like to think that we have like the highest selection of tall boots right now, which is what's in style and of our short boots. We design everything ourselves. We get it manufactured in Mexico and all of our boots are handmade. So we don't have like a machine that like puts them together and like, no, a physical person is making every boot that you're wearing. Nice, nice. Yeah. Handmade. So, so yeah, it's handmade. And, um, I mean, it's, it's been great. I mean, I, I don't do a lot of that because I'm in the marketing side, business sure. partners and the back end. He has a great eye for all that. Uh, uh, you know, he's very smart, business oriented, so he takes care of it. But I think it's it's pretty cool, you know, like uh, all the work that all these people do in Mexico and us being able to like support them. And then aside from that, like everything that we're doing here, you know, I feel like we're really bringing like a very modern style to like what people think. It's like a very paisa like yeah look, you know, it's definitely a fine line because yeah. I I've never liked the the super super like pointy boots, yeah. but definitely I like you know a nice like squared toe but still narrow so yeah i mean they're nice i saw them in person i tried some on eventually like i am gonna end up getting some and the tejana so stay tuned for the look all right yeah, it's he coming. needs to model for us something something <laughs> something's coming let me get in shape first and then for sure we'll do a little video but for sure. um, i did want to sneak peek something man because i know you know we went over there you and blanca have been teasing this yeah. idea about yeah. possibly doing a collab with some booze which you know she was rocking them right and mm -hmm. I, I think it's gonna be so so dope so i don't want to say too much and spoil yeah. the news but just kind of explain like what what's to come yeah well like i think it's it's well needed um you know she came down she tried on the boots she said she had never tried like the taller boot and i think she really liked it she and she just kind of pitched an idea and like maybe we'll make it happen soon yeah yeah, yeah. who knows man so just yeah. be on the lookout for be that on the lookout for that and um i think it'll be nice for her and i think the girls are gonna love it oh, and, and i think it's cool to have a collab with somebody that's supported her from the start and, and then yes. she helped you out and it just it works yeah, out you know it's a blessing and i also think it's cool that she's not like your typical western girl like we have western influencers and Blanca's not a Western influencer, you know, so yeah. it'll be cool to kind of bring in somebody different just so you guys can see anybody can wear Western boots. You for don't sure. have to be like a uh, vaquera. To no, wear yeah, those, even you know? for guys in terms of fashion, like mm -hmm. you can literally wear them so many different ways, you know, yeah. so we'll see. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll pull I'll pull some looks for you guys. Yeah. So that way you guys don't think you have to be tucked in. <laughs> Your and the active deal. faith with the boots. <laughs> yeah, just with shorts. Just when I was a kid, I have another picture here. I used to love wearing, um, I had like a polo with yeah. shorts and then boots. It was the weirdest <laughs> shit ever, but. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's cool, man. At least, mm -hmm. at least, um, you know, people are getting kind of the idea of how you run your store. Yeah. CEO. So, so it's just getting into the mom life. How do you balance that, that out? You know, and of course, you're still married. So making yeah. time because For I know reason. your husband also helps you out. Yeah. So how's that working with your significant other? So I think that um, it had... He actually says we fight less <laughs> now. And <laughs> right. I think it's just You agree to more stuff, that's why. I, I feel like, no, I feel like it's because before he had his job. So he didn't really understand, like, all the work that I did in the back end. I think people can easily see, like, all the good things we're doing online and they can think it may be easy. And a lot goes into it. There's a lot of moving parts. So I have been, you know, absent for a while just because I'm trying to grow. The, the business is a baby. It's barely growing. 
So I don't think he understood like all the work that went into it until he like came in to work with me and actually saw me in action. Right, right, right. So now he understands like, oh, okay, this is what she's working on. This is what she's doing. Yeah, you know? and this is why you're stressing. And and this is why this shit's taking forever, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that goes into design development. And yes. um, I think that was probably the best move he could have done to support you and, yeah. and to be involved and understand. And um, I'm sure, like you said, there's less, like, arguing about it. Yeah, you know? yeah. I feel like he, he gets me now. And um, I feel like we also can handle, like, having time with the kids better because before it was just him, you know. We, he, he was always um, getting out of work at 4, so he had, like, all afternoon with them while I was at work till late at night. So now, like, I'm like, hey, I'm going to leave early. Can you, like, stay behind? Or, hey, can you leave early today? And I'll stay behind, Yeah, you, know? you guys balance it out. Yeah, and, and, you know, my business partner is great, and he's always supporting. So he will say, hey, guys, take off two to three days and go out with your family and do a couple things. So, nice, nice. You know, we will take, like, a couple days by ourselves, which we couldn't before, you know? Cool. Yeah, it looks like it's a nice, uh, you know, it's like a well oiled machine now, I yeah. guess you can say. Uh, so what's your guys' biggest argument? I want to say, like, in terms of, like, now being together in business, it can't all be good, right? Um, there, there has to be, like, some, what is it? You know what? Like, we really have not had any big argument. Well, yeah, you know what? Yes. Our biggest ar argument, I think it's that now he's, like, maybe trying to be too involved. And I'm, like, I can't have you be too involved. He's calling shots or what? <laughs> it's like, no, I'm just, like, okay, we got to balance, like, if I'm all the way in and you're all the way in, like our kids are not going to have time for us. So it's either I'm all in or you're okay, all in, okay, you know? Yeah. And like, I, I guess as a man, as a guy, like he wants to make sure that he also takes charge, you know? I get it. Yeah, yeah, Ego yeah. thing. It's it's, a, it's just a thing as a guy, you know? We yeah. want to we be taken serious or For sure. Bit, yeah. And I get it. Like, I understand, but it just, it would not work out because we cannot both be absent, you know? Yeah. So I think his, our biggest issue has been just getting him to understand that it cannot happen. Like, I'm sorry, I get it. Like, you might open a business in the future and you'll see but right now this is my baby and i just have to take care yeah. of it you know as mean as that sounds so. no no no. yeah no yeah. It's, it's the truth though you know mm -hmm. so it's good that you know you guys have those conversations though. yeah it's important to know and, and understand each other's place mm -hmm. and just like do really good in that area so now um as far as the babies just uh talk about i know you have a daughter and then a son mm -hmm. so how's that for you um, I, I think it's been a little hard. There's definitely that mom guilt there just because I am spending a lot of time at work. Um, but thankfully for me, I have my mom. I have my tia who babysits them as well. And so they do help me out a lot. And I know that what I'm doing is like to better their future, you know, yeah. and, and ev eventually I know I'll get to a place where I can balance both. Um, right now we're just too new, you know, we're too fresh. And like both babies happen to come at the right time. Adriel was only seven months when the business started. You know, Arianelli was born into like the business already being there. So um, it's still pretty fresh, you know. Yeah. Do you think that that was a big reason why you started it too? Because, like, you know, when the kids come, I feel like it sparks something in you to want to provide a better future and maybe yeah. make some, some um, big moves, I guess you yeah. can say. Well, I feel like I've always been like very business oriented. Like when I was young, um, I used to do choreography for, for quinceañeras because oh, I, really? I just I had a job and then I wanted to do choreography on the side to get extra money. And then I also did um, I worked at a quinceañera store. I worked at Journeys. I did makeup for a while for like four years for brides and quinceañeras okay, and like stuff. Mobile. So yeah, so I always had like an extra side income. And then after I did makeup, I started YouTube. YouTube did great. So then I, YouTube was my extra income. Um, so I think I always had like that drive to want to have my own business my own income to not want to work for right someone, right yeah. and that's how i feel with blanca too that she's done all these great things and all these other things mm -hmm. but when she had her own business it was just like you know something that you created yes. for yourself and it represents you and stuff so yeah it's cool i mean the kids stuff i mean that stuff is going to come with time mm -hmm. you know it's funny because you think it's going to take a long time like okay well we have up until they're like maybe five when they start school yeah but then next thing you know like max is almost four yeah i'm like shoot like are we making the right moves like is everything flowing at this at the pace we want it to flow sure. so um it'll happen with time but eventually you start to like be able to balance out mm -hmm. and, and maybe like you know just create a better balance yeah and i feel like you can't um, find it the only reason why like we feel guilt is maybe because we think we're in charge of our time um and i feel like it would be the same thing if i was at a, at a nine to five you know i'll be out all day but since like i know i'm in charge of my time right now it's like oh why is why am i not making time for them right. you know as opposed to like at a nine to five, it would be the exact same thing. Yeah, I think a lot of the times too, in 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 being an entrepreneur, CEO, whatever, our mind's always working, mm -hmm. even if we're not at the location. Yes. The mind's always working. That's mm -hmm. like my biggest thing with Blanca that I tried to help her 
separate it and just shut yeah. the phone off for a bit like mm-hmm. the kids are gonna go to sleep in an hour and a half like let's just do a puzzle with max right like i'm, I'm over here playing dress up with camila like yeah. she's like painting me and yeah. all this stuff so you know it's just stuff they like to do they mm-hmm. spend time with you um i've always said like being there and actually spending time are two different things so yeah. just because you're in the room doesn't mean you were with your kids you know yes. next thing you know you go to work the next day you're like shit yeah. Um, I left when they were sleeping and then mm-hmm. I got back and they were almost time for bed. So yeah, yeah, it gets yeah. hard. So that's why you have to learn how to like balance it. Yeah, balance it out. And like I always say, create the balance. You can't find it. It's not going to just come to you. Right. And one day makes sense. Like you yeah. have to literally find a way to be able to uh, make those times and fulfill whatever it is that you want with them. So you know, that'll happen. Yeah, that'll happen. Sure. So do you have more siblings or no? Um, yes. Yeah, so I have two brothers and one sister. Mm-hmm. Two brothers and one sister. And you're what? I'm in the, I'm, I'm the middle. Okay. I'm the middle. I'm middle the, child. what is it, like the unwanted child? Yeah, that's the, me too, yeah. the, the middle child. I knew yeah. we were related somehow. <laughs> yeah. Where you feel my pain. I, I <laughs> definitely do. <laughs> so what it's is hard. that like? What was that like for you? Because it is a middle child thing. It's a yeah. real thing, guys. Like, I'm not just there saying is. it's a joke around, but no. it's almost like you just got to, you're independent, like, yeah. your whole time. That's what we were, it's funny, because we were just talking about that over lunch, uh, maybe, like, a week ago. Um, and we were asking each other, like, where were we in, like, the sibling chart? And I was like, I'm the middle child. Like, I'm the one that I had to, like, do it on my own. You know, uh, my my older brother is the favorite because he's, that is el mas pendejito. Sorry, <laughs> Jose, sorry. Is el mas pendejito. I have my older sister who's, like, the perfect child. Like, she's so good. She follows all the rules. She does everything my mom wants. And then there's a baby, you know, and, like, he's the baby. So yeah. we're going to, and then there's me, like, right in the You're middle. Just there so it's like, through, yeah. yeah. So I'm just, like, trying to make it, trying to, like, make myself proud and like still be seen you know and i feel like that's why i always like i always want to make my mom proud because i feel like i never was like that one that was like paid attention to so like now i'm like look at me you know what's crazy though even though you are doing good it's Mm -hmm. still like you don't i mean i don't know it's weird with the parents i just feel like they are proud of us don't get me wrong but they you're just not gonna get that like it just they don't know how to express it or it's just a middle child thing but that's how I felt, too. And in a way, it's good, though, because I feel like you have that underdog kind of like mm-hmm. black sheep mentality where mm-hmm. you just continue to just like do what you got to do because there's no other choice, you know? Yeah, it. I mean, yeah, it, it is. But it, it's also like I feel like I always need to have somebody tell me I'm doing like yeah. a good job well, just because I like my mom never did. So it's like, OK, am I doing a good job? For sure. Yeah, it's almost like we look for approval in a way. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. we want that good feedback. Sure. So I, I do relate to that for sure. A lot, and sometimes I, we, I, I guess you can say I didn't realize it was there, but I, I do see myself mm-hmm. kind of wanting that. Yeah, you know. So I think yeah. it's important, even like with Blanca, like whenever I get that, um, I want to say it's just almost like they boost your ego a little yeah, bit. Like for sure, we need that, you mm-hmm. know. So, um, what sign are you actually? Virgo. Virgo. So what are your the, the toxic I'm traits? I'm not really into signs, so no? like I wouldn't know. I asked her. I asked I'm like, what are the toxic like, traits? Because <laughs> I'm not really into. My mom says that's brujeria. We're not supposed Seriously. to. Seriously, <laughs> no. My mom, you know, it's yeah. funny, but then there are the ones that are over there looking at it. Yeah, los horoscopos. The horoscopos. Walter, Walter, yeah. Walter Mercado. Yeah. And then they said, be careful, because I saw this on the, on the Walter. <laughs> they, on the they said we're perfectionist. It's funny, because we were talking about Primer Impacto earlier, that the setup yeah. looks like that. So it just ties in <laughs> together somehow. Right. Yeah. Um, so how can you say, man, I want to get into the Texas and California thing, because mm-hmm. we were over there. And of course, like, yeah. naturally, people are going to be drifting towards looking at properties in Texas oh, yeah. and, and all that stuff. So mm-hmm. um, what's that like life over there? Have you seen a lot more people move in? Mm-hmm. Um, what can you say? I personally actually have a couple friends that have moved from L.A. to Texas, not Houston necessarily, but the city surrounding. So, yeah, it is like definitely a lifestyle here. Like you guys were saying, it's very nice. There's a lot to do. Restaurants are great. Um, And we don't have a lot, a lot of that in, in Texas, but I feel like. It's, I don't know. It just feels like home over there. Like Oh, yeah. Always, yeah. Yeah, like it feels like home. And maybe it's because that's where I lived my whole life. But I feel like I love Houston. Like, I don't know. I just love being there. I love the people there. I love what we do. I love our teams. Like, just everything about where I'm at, like, it feels like I'm in the right place. Yeah, you know? it's scary, right, to think that you'd be somewhere else. Yeah. Or how do you just start over, right? Yes. I mean, we're in California to California, so it, it's just a different side of California, yeah. but it was still a change. Yeah. Faster pace here. Everybody's just minding their own business. It's yeah. just, you know, it's a doggy dog kind of like environment. Yeah. But there's yeah. a lot of nice things to do around, you know, just a better area in general. So yeah. 
there's there's some good in it. It's just more so like going from another state. I mean, shoot, it's crazy, right? Yeah, and and I feel like honestly, no offense, but I do feel like Southern hospitality is a thing. Like for sure, I didn't know until I came here, and I was like, oh man, like some yeah. of these people are not happy. Like, no, 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 yeah, definitely know, here, at. people could be a little rude here and there, yeah. you know, depending where. Also, too, I mean, like it's almost like their shit don't stink. Yeah, you know, uh-huh. and I think where we're from, Northern California, it's a little more homey. Okay, yeah, so yeah. So we get a little bit more of that love. Yeah. Um, here, I think we just have so much diversity. So mm-hmm. many people from different, they're probably not even from LA, to be honest. Yeah. It's just they're from different states and right. they come and that's how it starts. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I didn't get to try the barbecue when I went. I know, but you guys gotta go back. It was, a, it was a quick trip. A really quick trip. So, photo shoot, barbecue. Mm-hmm. That's all I asked for. Just, <laughs> okay. Just take me somewhere where the we barbecue is gonna you. be good. Okay. And then I'll be happy with that. <laughs> But yeah, I'm excited to see like to do like a little outfit. So yeah. I mean, I'm already thinking if you guys do a collab, like the promo for it will be dope. Oh, man. I gotta be involved somehow. We gotta do some dancing. Definitely, you gotta come in, come in there and show how you made her fall in love. Seriously, we'll play some arrolladora in the in the ad video. <laughs> Shit, we have to. We have to. <laughs> um, so what's coming? What's uh what's coming next? Uh, you kind of talked about everything. Mm-hmm. Um. Typically, you know, I like to kind of cover all areas. So maybe some stuff that you're working on. Is there any other businesses you eventually want to get into? Because, I mean, you do have a good background Yeah. Um, yeah. with all that stuff. So maybe just explain that. Yeah, well, I definitely do want to get back onto, like, the YouTube um, world just because I feel like um, I was so inspired, and I would love to do that for somebody, you know? Like, I would love for someone to, like, look at where I am at now and want to like pursue like maybe their own business or like a YouTube career. So I definitely want to get back with that. Um, but I do have other businesses in mind since I do have a business partner, you know, with Rockham, which I love, I love you junior, but I do want to have my own business in the future, you know, whether it's like, I've always been into fashion, not necessarily like Western. So maybe I'll bring something like around that. Yeah, that'll be good. And, and, And now we have like so many other, um, you know, I'm into the clothing. I'm in the development of that. So, you know, we could point you in the right direction, too, if yeah. you ever need help with that. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as I was going to ask you something else. Okay, so we're talking about, you know, like woman empowerment, CEO. Uh. I feel like a lot of girls are scared to start stuff. You know, a lot yeah. of girls feel like there's so much hate in women, I think, in the yeah. world in general. So right. I want to say what would be your piece of advice for a girl that's out there trying to kind of like step out of her comfort zone, start yeah. something do something for herself because a lot of people say like, Oh, well you can't do it or whatever. So, you know, what's your take on that? Well, I just say, um, first step is just going for it. Um, and I think like you said, there's a lot, there's a lot of like competition, quote unquote competition. But I feel like as long as you stay true to like what you really want to do and not look at anybody else, um, to get better, um, you're just going to get somewhere, you know, we had a lot of people, a lot of people that come for us. It has not been easy. And I feel like, um, I've always stayed like to myself, like, okay, I'm not going to like pay attention. I'm not going to pay it, mind. Yeah. I'm not going to entertain it. And it's worked great. So I just feel like if you have a passion for something, just go for it, start it, you know, write it down, write your checklist off and then just uh, consistency, just be consistent. You know, it's, it's not as easy as it seems. I think our launch went great, but after that, that's whenever the hard work started. Oh, yeah, so yeah. It's definitely not as easy as it seems. So you just got to come with it, you know? Yeah, because that's not always going to define, like, the next launch. Yes. You know, like, you can have a great launch and then be shitty for the next right. three months. And, right. and, and in that kind of online business, it's all about consistency, mm-hmm. too. Definitely. You know, having good employees at your store, the yes. customer service, their representation of the brand, mm-hmm. getting good people, people mm-hmm. that are willing to, like, stick by you and believe right. in the vision and stuff. So there's just a lot to it. But I think in terms of just, um, you know, especially girls, I think just um, – not not letting you know those people kind of define right. like whatever it is that you want to do for yourself and right? like you know you step into the room like you own it that's what i do i like the boot business is a man business to be honest like yeah. especially out in texas nothing but like man own western stores so like i step in like i am the owner of rocco and you're gonna respect me just as much as much as you respect for all sure. these other men yeah. you know that's dope and yeah. um you know to me too it's it's um i want to say the confidence is is really important because Mm -hmm. you know you have to be resilient in business regardless like Mm -hmm. you can't like you can't really like let something so small throw you off you know like and i think as time goes you continue to get better guys like you're not always gonna be in that position where 
you don't know anything. You yeah. Know? You're going to sure. just like learn with time and stuff. Mm-hmm. So what, what's your day to day routine? Um, you know, or how, what are some tips in starting your business? Like, and do, like do you said, write stuff down. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some stuff that you recommend? Um, I feel like before I started this business, I actually had wrote down like a manifestation book and on my book I wrote down to start a business in 2021 which was last year I actually started a year before God just worked for me a little faster but I wrote down like the type of businesses that I wanted to start and then I just did research on YouTube so definitely like just do your research um there's a lot of cool videos now on YouTube that kind of just guide you through the whole thing like literally that's there's the really nothing that you have to like learn on your own because we can just search it up and you'll find it so. yeah you'll definitely find it now I think back then YouTube was a little bit more um it wasn't there wasn't as much stuff out there i guess yeah. you can say nowadays people are making like super detailed videos that yeah. literally all you have to do is watch it right yeah back then it was notes. like more like con like um what is it like vlogs and family content content creators like that but now you can find just about anything yeah. you know yeah that's what the podcast too like i like to give people information valuable stuff mm-hmm. and then we'll go back i mean sometimes people don't want to sit down and watch something for so long but they'll learn like so much doing yeah. it you know um, but you just keep killing it, keep doing your thing. The yep. woman empowerment is good to hear the backstory too with Blanca. So I'm excited to see what you guys do together. Yes, thank and you. um, you know, looking forward to going back over there mm-hmm. because you know the water burger wasn't it. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> it was. Like, I was <laughs> like, maybe it's the water burger you guys went to. Yeah, like I think maybe lo, that los was just mal, I feel. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. what what's the whole thing with that? So you've tried in and out, right? Yeah. I mean, there's no hype to in and out, but like, really? I feel like there's really no hype to Whataburger either. So I feel like, I mean, I don't know. We went to in and out, I think like two days after you guys left. Cause I was like, okay, let me just make sure that I didn't just like want to be a hater. And like, I think it's cause you it. did it in Texas. That's why you gotta <laughs> oh, do it here. Yeah. <laughs> well, the lines are long as heck on our in and outs over there. Oh, like yeah. you gotta wait forever. So oh, like yeah. we went to in and out and I'm like, so you already Still? don't like it just being no, in line. No, like I, well, no, I just didn't like the burger. Like there's nothing to the what burger. What did you get? I got, I don't know. You guys have like three things on the That's menu. It. It's <laughs> because there's a secret menu. If people don't know about that. Well, I asked her, I was like, do you guys have a secret menu? And she said, no. They have a secret menu. If you look <laughs> it up, you'll find it. So, um, for example, on the double double, you could ask for, um, like whole grilled onions or yeah. just like animal style, which is basically just like diced sauteed onions with yeah. the actual cheese mm-hmm. you could add peppers inside just a lot of but stuff did you, you really know? not like whataburger i thought it was decent like it just i don't know it just felt greasier see after after the baile like we would go out to dance every day after the baile that's where we would go yeah whataburger that's where everybody meets that was just the, the thing to do huh yeah but what's the best thing on the menu for somebody that hasn't tried it um my my favorite is the buffalo ranch the sandwich, buffalo ranch sandwich. Um, and Tonyo's my favorite my husband's is the monterey melt and that seems to be like the most popular. Right. That's the one I was gonna get, and mm-hmm. it reminded me of the one in Jack in the Box. The <laughs> oh I my god, the name. they just keep clowning us. Yeah, Blanca said I, we went that Whopper, low. and now you're saying <laughs> Jack, Jack in the Box. Box. It was the other one. What was it called, Eric? The Jack? Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah, something kind of male, but uh, it reminded <laughs> me of that. So that's why I didn't get it. Yeah. No, that one is bomb. Tonya eats that all yeah. the time. It looked good, though. It looked good. So I'm going to give it another try when we go. But, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, It's just when we went, you know, we also the weather was like a little different for us yeah. because it is humid. Surprisingly, people think it's super hot all the time, yeah. but it's actually a humid hot, right? Yes, it is. And then you guys went on like the hottest day of the year, to be honest. No way. Yeah, I was like, it looks like you guys brought it with you. So, yeah, it, did, it is like that because we have a beach nearby. Okay, okay. We have Galveston Beach, so it is humid all okay. the time. So, yeah, for the, for those that haven't been in Texas, it's I mean, there, I'm sure, like I said, there is a lot of other things to do mm-hmm. and, and see and stuff. But we were there on a quick trip. Yeah. But either way, you know, um, we appreciate the hospitality when we went. You know, you guys drove us around. Mm-hmm. Um, your husband let me borrow his truck. I was troqueando in Texas. <laughs> I actually Monica. had my truck. I was telling you about that. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. telling about the truck, so... It just it's funny because there's like no you're either you're either a cut or that's yeah, it. Like yeah. You can't have a truck and not be a cut. Right. Apparently. And I actually don't see any here. Well, I have not seen any here. And I'm like, do people just not drive trucks here? Like, here in, the, in no this area, trucks? a little bit. Oh, okay. lifted. A, yeah. Way. But but you will see them around here and there. But it's just funny because when you see them, you just know like, okay, uh, this this guy see this. But on the other side of LA, yeah, you do see them um, a lot more. So uh, it just depends where you're. I at. was telling Blanca, our like best customers are from California. Like our our top sales are 
probably 40% Texas, 50% um, California. California. Okay. And then the, ten, the other 10 is just around the surface. Yeah, I think it's cool because that's kind of, um, I want to say, like an incentive for you guys that you guys mm -hmm. can say that you make them in Mexico and yeah. then you're also from Texas. It's yeah. just like the place to get it, yeah. you know? So it's cool. But, mm -hmm. you know, eventually we'll... I'm going to have to take a little picture with the truck, with the booth, huh? Oh, yeah, Looking. for sure. He's for right sure. there standing like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. But we'll end it with that. I'm going to have, a, yeah. like I said, I'm going to have it tagged right there. Mm -hmm. Make sure you guys check them out. Pick up a pair for yourself. Like I said, we are going to do a discount code as well. Um, thank you for your time. Good luck with everything. I'm excited to see, like I said, the collab with you guys and then pretty much everything else. Yeah, you're gonna be thank doing. you for having me. This yeah. was not bad. No, it wasn't bad. You did a great job. We're a little nervous, but, yeah. you know, we, we make it happen. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I think people... They don't know what to expect from yeah, me. Yeah, for sure. You know, this guy's serious. I don't know. Like, what's it, what are we going to talk about? Uh -huh. But I've gotten better as a host and just asking the right questions. I usually just like to make sure that I ask everything that yeah, I want to ask. For sure. And we're good. But you did a good job. Um, yeah. Like I said, congrats with all the stuff you're doing. And, you know, make time for the kiddos whenever you can. Mm -hmm. And continue to kill it in business. So I'll see you guys next time. Drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think. What, what was your favorite part of this video? And actually, I almost forgot, but you got to do the Needed Podcast Wall of Fame. Oh, okay. So cool. this is just your autograph and then something that you live by. Stay humble. Finish no, there's a lot of good stuff. Away, you know? No, yeah, th there's a lot of good stuff on there, but I love that. Um, speaks volumes. Thank you again. See you guys next time. Peace.